uh, seriously though, mm-hmm. the money question, and mm-hmm. the reason why I want to ask you that is because we here, and you also are an entrepreneur as well, mm-hmm. but we always hear from the entrepreneurs how they try to down people who work regular jobs, not knowing mm-hmm. it's people like you and people <laughs> on the boards and all these companies that make more than entrepreneurs. Uh-huh. And so that's what I want to talk to you about is like why it's important to niche and be very good. And like y'all saw all the things that he's able to go on interviews and say, I did all this stuff. When you can say that nine times out of 10, the job is pretty much yours. Nah, like my interviews are no longer interviews. It's like conversations of like, oh, like, how do you do that? Like, well, I can say there's an interview. Like I, like I control the interview to where like they're not asking me questions. Like, oh, like, yeah, I did this. This is why I did it. Boom, boom. What are you guys' environment? I try to like take my relevant experience and be like, oh, I've done this. This is how I can do it here. Boom, boom. So that that's really like when you an interview, you have some more experience. Yeah. You want to take control over it, so it's like they're not drilling you down with questions. Cause like I hate being questioned. Cause like I hate it, so. bro. Yeah. Like funny enough, like this role I got, I killed the interview because I had all the solutions. <clears throat> yeah. All the stuff they they are trying to do now, I had already did. Yeah. Everywhere else, especially at Optus with it, like that big company, I was like. With uh, who we were supporting with Disney, so I was just like, yeah, that was huge. I, I did it already. I was I was telling somebody the other day. I said, three years in, we still was finding new stuff in yeah. the environment. That that environment was so fucking big, bro. Like, and the fact that see, you was gone, but I was there for the launch of Disney Plus. Oh damn! Oh, I know that was crazy. It went too bad. That traffic. Oh, it wasn't. It went. It went. It went through without a hitch. Like, oh. but at, when Disney Plus came, they also had added Fox and Hulu, so they started like really. Yeah, they bought Hulu, didn't they? Yeah, we yeah. Saw, we had like another similar login to all that. So, it so was I need to buy cool. Disney Plus then instead of having Hulu because I got Hulu. I got Hulu. Um, well, my Hulu is free through Spotify. I got Disney Plus through like my homeboy. So I yeah. used his account. He like gave it to us a long time ago. Dad and HBO Max. Yeah, I got HBO Max too. But um, yeah, I was gonna say about the questioning thing. I have a one mm-hmm. of my clients' interviews that uh, I, I have all my clients record that interview so I can listen to them, critique them. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that a lot of people need to work on is filler words. Yeah. You really do make yourself seem like you're not sure you're yourself like you're every time you're saying um. <laughs> if if you say um all the time, I know it's hard, but just think about what you're going to say, pause in your head, and start talking. Star method, man. It'll help you. Even this also helped me with mm-hmm. not saying um as much or like, you We're know. Podcasting. I used to say you know so much. I say up, um a lot. Up until a couple of episodes ago, I saw a post. I want to say Liberty Madison probably posted it, and she was saying mm-hmm. how Saying um sometimes take away your credibility of seeing like an expert. Yeah, because think you trying to think about what you gotta say instead of just flat out saying it. Yeah. And so now I think mm-hmm. in my mind before what I'm gonna say, slow it down and then come out. And and that's and that's the thing when people doing the interviews as well too. Like they be trying to like I guess sometimes be sound smarter than what they really are. And a lot of times those people got years and years of experience so they know a bullshit when they see one. Facts. And you're just talking yourself out of a job. So, yes, that's why I tell people when it comes to our our interviews. Like, so I have, and that's one thing we're gonna do one day. If you want to have fun, mm. we can go live, and I have these sock analyst interview questions, and you can see people's answers. Oh no, we should do that. You can see people's answers on the Google Sheets. TikTok. And I tell I told one dude straight. I say, bro, I can. I know you didn't know the answer, but I can see all you did was slap something from Google and throw it on here versus yeah, trying to make sense of what I asked you and put it in your own words. That's yeah. not going to fly. I was like, don't get me wrong. I Google all the time, but I put it in my own words. I know how to explain it. I'll tell people, a soft skill that a lot of people don't recognize is like knowing your audience. So if you know your audience, you have no problem if you want to move through corporate. Yeah. Because them people that your manager report to, they don't understand all that stuff about data pipelines. So that's Once one thing zeros. about my manager, like my director. He actually is very technical, and I love it. That's how, so Yahoo Manager, super technical. That's why I wanted to work uh-huh. with Paranoids. I literally had the offer, but they had to put it on hold in Q4. Okay. And I was like, I don't feel like waiting around. But <laughs> well, JP Morgan had me bent, so yeah. I, I definitely didn't want to do that no more. And then um, Target, when I was doing, I was interviewing for the lead CSER analyst at Target, uh, and oh. they had to put that on hold, too. That was during the pandemic, or no? This was last year. This was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, that was a man. I'll tell you, that was like a cool, like that was like one of the more challenging interviews I had with a director. But he mm-hmm. was like, he asked me about looking for lateral movement and then data exfiltration on the Linux box, and then wow. we was talking about like SSH, and he was saying like they went into the files of the to get the MFA codes. Mm-hmm. It was it was fire. And listen, it's a strategy. I think I said on another interview, I mean episode, 
But all I do is string my interviews along and questions I really like that I think somebody might ask me in another interview. I take a mental note of them yeah. and get better on that answer and then tell the next person. Yeah, no, that's that's because I'm I'm trying to actually move more in like a DevSecOps role now, like data engineering, like, you know, the data pipeline, CICD pipeline. Money. I'm trying to go into like stuff like that now because like I say when I'm in a cybersecurity role, yeah. but like I know like big data is like yeah huge. Like, I need to, honestly, I want to look more into a lot of companies. It's going to eventually happen, but there are really no real guidelines over AI right now. Oh, yeah. We actually working on that right now. So once that happens with the generative AI, that's going to be big. <clears throat> so you can, that's another niche. Just like, I don't know if you That's kind of going to big data, though, when you right. think about it. I don't know if you watched my episode that I did with Erin uh, Relford. She works for Google. She's a privacy data engineer. No, I Those are some of the things like that. we talk about. And Actually, link that in here. You got to link that in this episode I so I can go back. <laughs> I'll link it in here. But we need to ask, okay, uh, real quick, a day in the life of a security engineer at a blockchain company. Mm-hmm. And I told people a lot of times, too, this dude is doing so good at work. They interviewed me out the strength that we work together. <laughs> Swear to God. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 How did it go anyway? Did y'all ever interview? We interviewed. I think... Okay. I think well, one of the things I was struggling with last year a lot toward the end was I had a year of really not being super technical, so I had uh-huh. lost like a lot of some of my skill set because I also had been doing all this other stuff, so it's mm-hmm. hard to like really study for different things. Yeah, but I also knew they probably was looking for somebody a little bit more engineer focused. For sure, because like, that's that's what happened with me. I interviewed man, bro. I was interviewing with this company called Woven Planet. Mm-hmm. And they work on like autonomous vehicles and working on the software and that. They're a subsidiary mm-hmm. of Toyota. Mm-hmm. They have a freaking smart city in, was it China or Japan? Called mm-hmm. Susano. Oh, so it's like Sasuke Susano. <laughs> nah, for real, bro. It's like, it's fire. I wanted to do it because, like, this I is remember a niche. we talked about that. I remember you was talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a niche, but like, I was, ex- like, that's the thing, too, guys. Like, find technology that gets you excited and you'll probably find another passion. No, for sure. That's that's the whole thing. It's like, I did a project on this in grad school. The Internet of Things, Smart City, Smart Clothes. Mm-hmm. So I already knew this was, what, 2018? So what's what, five years ago? So going yeah. on six years, I said within, I think we, in our project, we said within five, 10, 15 years, this is going to be the norm. Mm-hmm. Smart cameras, smart, yeah. all this different stuff. We that's already got it now with these doorbells. I remember, was that Nest? Was that, that wasn't the Nest cameras. Was that Ring, Ring. cameras? What other cameras was they got hacked like a, a year ago? 